If you hate the magnetic timeline, this video is for you. If you love the magnetic timeline, this video is also for you. I see so many comments in the Final Cut Pro Facebook groups of people asking how to disable the magnetic timeline. And you can, but you shouldn't. In this video, I'm gonna explain why the magnetic timeline is the way it is, why you should learn to love it, and also, yes, how to override it, because sometimes you do need to do that, but it's not the position tool. So let's start with a quick refresh of the timeline in Final Cut Pro. When you place clips here on the primary storyline, they automatically snap to the left. If I place clips above the primary storyline, they don't snap to the left, but they do connect to the clip underneath. This is also true for audio clips. They, by default, connect underneath the primary storyline. Now, if I had multiple clips on a connected storyline and I wanted to give them the properties of the magnetic timeline, all I have to do is select them and hit the shortcut Command G, and then you'll see this little bubble around them. And now they have the same properties as the primary storyline. In any clips that I drop above my primary storyline, snap downward as if they're pulled by gravity. All right, now let's hop out of my comfort zone into Adobe's Premiere Pro, and I'll show you how that non-magnetic timeline works. Here in Premiere, I can drop video clips to track one, and they stay put. They don't snap to the left. When I drop clips to video tracks two and above, they are completely independent of the clips in track one. And I can stack clips as high as I want, and they're not affected by gravity the way they are in Final Cut Pro. At first blush, the Premiere Pro timeline does seem superior. You have like so much more control and flexibility and who doesn't want more control and flexibility when they edit? Well, I'll tell you, people who wanna save time and aggravation. Think about the way we all edit. Generally, you start by laying out your audio, whether it's interviews in a documentary, dialogue from a narrative project, you as a YouTube creator talking to camera, or voiceover narration for a commercial. And then you add your supporting B-roll clips, cutaways, or graphics that match that audio. Generally speaking, that's the proper way to edit. If you're not doing it that way, I'm not gonna judge you, but I do think you need to rethink your life choices. The difference between Final Cut Pro and Premiere is that Final Cut Pro is aware that this is how editors work and Premiere Pro isn't. Let's take a look at this sequence. You can see here that on my primary storyline, I have all of these sound bites and then I have supporting B-roll and graphics above that primary storyline. Every single B-roll shot I dropped onto this timeline was a decision I made as an editor and I did it with purpose. The designer of the Final Cut timeline understood the way editors edit. So if you have some sort of audio or something on your primary storyline, whatever B-roll you drop on top contextually probably makes sense, right? You made a conscious decision to put that B-roll above that soundbite. That's why you have these connection points. Think of these connections as your intention as an editor. So if I wanted to move this soundbite around in my timeline, all of these clips that match what this soundbite says, plus this adjustment layer, this name super, and the sound effect all go with it. And wanting to swap things around on your timeline is super common as an editor, right? You try things out, see how they sound, maybe rearrange them. It's totally a normal, very common part of the process. But that doesn't address this whole thing, the snapping left to right. Let's hop back over to Premiere and I'll show you the advantages of this. So here we are in Premiere Pro with basically the same sequence built here. If I wanted to move this soundbite, I could just click it and drag it, but it would overwrite whatever I moved it to. So I'm gonna undo that. And you notice that all of my associated clips that I carefully placed here did not move along with my soundbite. So now what I'll do instead is select all of these clips I wanna move and this sound effect. And now I'm gonna hold down the command key and drag all of these elements further up in my timeline. And now it hasn't overridden those existing clips, but it has created this gap here. I'm gonna select this gap and hit delete. And I do still have this little gap. If I wanna close it up, I'm going to grab the select forward tool and grab all of these elements and close up that gap. But now I realize I inadvertently created a gap in my music cut because I forgot to lock that audio to track. Let me go back to my regular selection tool and close this gap. And then, oh wait, you know what, you guys? I forgot my adjustment layer was all the way up here. Now I gotta drag this over as well and figure out where this belongs. So you can see how many steps it took to move my soundbite with its associated B-roll, graphics, sound effects, and adjustment layers in my timeline. I also had to close up that music gap. Let me show you the difference in Final Cut Pro. So in Final Cut, if I wanted to grab my soundbite, my sound effect, my graphic, my B-roll shots, and my adjustment layers, I just grab this particular soundbite 
and I can drop it right here. That's it. That's all it took. As my brother-in-law would say, it's so easy. I didn't even get a gap in my music because the music is connected to this first clip, so it's always going to stay put. You can see how the magnetic timeline frees you up as an editor and eliminates the worry of creating inadvertent flash frames and gaps in your timeline. And you don't have to think about the mechanics of moving stuff around. You can just do it and focus on the story you're telling and the video you're trying to create. That is why you should learn to love the magnetic timeline. Now I'm going to show you how to override the magnetic timeline because there are definitely times you're going to want to be able to do that. But before I do that, if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro, I have my own courses at jenjager.com. You want to check out Final Cut Rockstar. I will link to it down below. So one thing you might be wondering is how do I create a space on my primary storyline in between these sound bites, let's say. So what you want to do is insert what's called a gap clip. So you can head on up to edit and then down to insert generator and then gap, or you can just remember the handy dandy shortcut option W. And the default is it'll drop in a three second gap clip that you can extend or contract to the exact length that you need. And this gap clip works like any other clip in the magnetic timeline. Now here's the big secret to overriding the magnetic timeline. It's one key on your keyboard that holds all the magic and it is the tilde key in the top left of your keyboard. Let's say I want to swap this clip with this clip, but I don't want to bring these connected items with it. I want the music also to stay put. So all I have to do is select the first clip, hold down that tilde key, and I get this new cursor with this orange circle. I don't know what that icon is. If somebody knows, let me know down below, but I, I don't know. It doesn't matter though, because we just need to know how it works. All I have to do is select the first clip, hold down the tilde key on my keyboard, and push it where I want further down in my timeline. Now you can see I've swapped these clips without moving the connected clips. Another way to use the tilde key to override the magnetic timeline is when you're on the trim tool. Now while I do this, I want you to focus on this B-roll clip here. Without the tilde key, if I trim the clip, the B-roll shot stays exactly where it is. If I hold down the tilde key, again, I get that orange icon. I can trim this shot but that B-roll shot stays equidistant to my cut point. Do you see that? Another way to use the tilde key is if you're still on the trim tool, but you're trying to make a slip edit, which is when you hold your mouse in the center of a clip and you can shift the in and out of that clip without affecting the duration. You can see that connected clip comes with it. If I hold down the tilde key and do that again, look, that B-roll shot stays put, but I'm still making that slip edit. And one other way to use that tilde key is to delete clips. So if I delete this particular clip by selecting it, just hitting the delete key, that clip disappears as does the associated B-roll clip. However, if I hold down the tilde key and hit the delete key, I maintained that B-roll clip, but I got rid of the clip on my primary storyline. Now let's switch to that position tool. Without the tilde key, the position tool allows you to grab a particular clip and its connected media and just create a gap clip. I'm gonna put everything back. This time I'm going to hold down the tilde key. Again, I get that orange icon. And now I can move the clip on my primary storyline, create gap clips, but the connected clips stay in place. So that's everything you need to know about the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. I hope that understanding the purpose of it can help you learn to love it and see the huge advantages of that magnetic timeline. You guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Subscribe to my channel for more Final Cut Pro tips. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.